We're thinking about different uh, opportunities. We have a program called Go Vermont, where we're trying to help people carpool and vanpool. Actually, the state of Vermont subsidizes vans for people who can come together as a unit uh, that commute to work. So we've got a carpooling, ride sharing, and van pooling. We have a web-based clearinghouse. If you register to www.govermont.org, you can find out more about ways you can hook up with someone from your area. It's an online system that tries to link people up who are looking for rides. So people can carpool, or what about these park and ride? Uh, are they, are you, they can, you can carpool, or you can meet at the park and ride. You can figure it out online as you meet one another. So we're trying to link people up because we know as the cost of fuel goes up, people will start to look at alternatives. And we're trying to make it easier for people to find different choices and to get away from depending on their single occupant vehicle. Now the conventional wisdom, or at least some conventional wisdom in this state, often very grouchily expressed, is this is never going to work in Vermont because we're too rural. Public transportation is not uh, realistic in uh, outside of Chittenden County and maybe Rutland City and two or three other small towns. and. And there's no point in building more sidewalks because people won't walk anyway because people don't like to walk. Especially old people, they don't like to walk. Actually, I'm an old person who loves to walk, but, um, but I'm, <laughs> I'm in good shape. But, I mean, what do you, what do you say? I mean, is, do you hear that a lot as you go around? I hear some of that, but not that much. I hear mm -hmm. more demand for more sidewalks. We want to make our communities more vital and vibrant. I have a tremendous, I hear a lot of demand for improving our bicycle accommodations. Um, the question isn't really about will people use it, it's more about is that the best use of that dollar. Okay. And uh, I can certainly respect that every dollar we spend is a choice not to spend it somewhere else and I think that's a legitimate concern. But we know we have to think long term. Uh, we have to make our communities places that people want to come. And we have an incredible showcase here in Vermont. I mean, here we are in Burlington, a very walkable city. It's rated in how many magazines as one of the best places to live. People come here because of the quality of life, and that's something we need to build upon and continue. I think some of the questions, you know, our rural nature, absolutely, people have made choices to date to live further away and feel fine about utilizing their car. It's quite possible that as if and the price of oil continues to rise, they make different choices. And so part of our land use policy, and it goes well beyond my work in the Agency of Transportation, but as a state, we're trying to invest in more housing and uh, a diverse um, workforce opportunities where we can have more workplaces and housing all in closer proximity in our downtowns and in our village centers so people will have to use their cars less. And you know there's a program called Car Share Vermont here in Burlington right. where folks choose not to buy a car or maybe not to buy a second car but instead pay a monthly fee to be a part of car share and share a car. And people are already making those choices. They're doing them elsewhere and they're going to start to do them here. I think we will probably see behavior change, but we have to make those opportunities available. When you start talking about uh, walkable cities, you know, our obesity challenge is another amazing challenge nationally. And part of it, I believe, is related to the lifestyle that depends so much on riding and driving in your car and less on actually walking to the store or walking to school. We have a program at Vermont at VTrans called the Safe Routes to School program. It's actually a national program. And we uh, invest in communities and schools that have put together programs to increase walking and riding to school. So we link- And riding a bike. Riding a bike to school. We link the program with some of the investments that VTrans can help make. It is a federally supported program as well, so it's 80-20, but it takes safe crossings, which we don't have. It takes good sidewalks that we may not always have. It takes bike lanes. It takes 
infrastructure investments so that parents feel comfortable for their child to walk and ride. So we invest in the infrastructure, the school invests in a program, so we have it in my community of Waterbury, Walking Wednesday. It's a big day when parents walk their kids to school, parents ride with their kids to school, and it's part of a whole fitness program, and it's sponsored at the school uh, by the phys ed department. And, so, when you, and when you go around the state and talk about this, which I assume you do from time to time, do you not get some reaction that this is a lot of nanny state uh, uh, social engineering? You know, schools love it, parents love it, people want to be outside, people want to support their community and their school. Again, everyone can challenge, why would we invest in this when we have so many structurally deficient bridges? And the answer is we, we have to be thinking short term and we have to be looking at the long term. And I think when people want to live and what you find is in communities where there are, which are walkable, um, the values of the homes increase, they don't go down.